Today we're building two 7-foot RGB lamps powered by WLED. These guys can even run off phone chargers during a power outage. They're useful for normal room lighting or entertaining guests. Let's get building. You may have seen similar RGB floor lamps advertised to add color to your living spaces. However, these lamps are just limited to warm or natural white lighting or are RGB with a limited set of can patterns. These lamps are usually around four feet or just over one meter tall. What if you could build two seven foot tall lamps that you could use for natural room lighting as well as get the power of WLED patterns for mood lighting or entertaining family and guests? In today's video, we'll cover creating RGB floor lamps powered by WLED. This project gave me a chance to try out new type of pixel lights, well, they're new to me, as well as stretch my skills at home furniture design. We'll split the project into three different sections, lights, lamp frame, and controller. If you're interested in the components used in the project, I'll put links to the material in the description below. Let's get started. This project was unique for a couple of reasons. The first is the choice of lights. Usually I use these 11 millimeter bullet pixels that are meant for outdoor use. They have silicone to protect them from the weather and they work pretty well to put into uh, yard props. When I do things like my daughter's light suit, I used these uh, Alatov uh, WS2812B strips. These are really nice in that they uh, come also with silicone uh, over the LEDs and they're pretty rugged and they're pretty useful for a, light, a mobile light suit. What makes this different is the, the SK6812 RGBW LED strip that I used. And this is unique for a couple reasons. Now it's stripped just like the WS2812. One thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have the silicone. Notice here that this has no silicone over this strip like this does. You see the nice little, get it in a little closer. You see it has a nice covering of silicone, so it's not weatherproof. I won't need it because th these lights are not gonna go outside. What it does have, however, it has an additional white channel. So you can see this is an RGBW LED strip. And that makes it unique in a couple, for a couple reasons. You can see that yellow piece is the, the white, the natural white. Here's a close-up view of the LED. You can see the SK6812 chip here. Here's the red LED and the green LED and the blue LED. Finally, the last LED is the white LED in the yellow section. You can light up any or all of these LEDs and combined they can make a stronger white or you can just light up the white LED for a softer natural white. Another useful feature about these particular lights is that instead of 12 volts, these are 5 volt lights. That 5 volts comes in handy because, as I found out uh, a couple days ago, we had a power outage in our house. And because I chose 5 volts, I could power the entire lamp with one of these. these are, this is a phone charger. Essentially, it's a USB charger that gives 5 volts, 2.4 amps, and it will power the lights plus your controller. So it's all self-contained, and I had a really excellent source of light during that power outage. So. Keep that in mind when you choose your lights. 12 volts are, is nice, but you can't power your entire lamp off of a phone charger. The next part of the project that took me out of my comfort zone is how would I build the lamp? I'm comfortable with LEDs, but how would I build the structure of the lamp? Well, I went and purchased two 10 foot sections of this corner oak molding, and it proved to be a, a, a nice mount for the lights. Initially, this is all I was going to do, was just mount the lights and have the, the power injection wire run through the back. But after that, um, we decided, well, why don't we use, uh, channeling, aluminum channeling that's meant for LEDs. And here we have a 45 degree angle channeling that we can inlay the lights. The lights would essentially sit right here in the middle. Uh, this diffuser will fit over the over the channel and diffuse the lights a little bit. And the power injection wire, so I mean, there's not much room for the light with the diffuser over top of it. Another benefit of this 45 degree channeling is this little hole in the back where we could fit two 18 gauge wires through from the bottom and power the top with an additional power injection wire. So those two wires ran the length of the seven foot lamp all the way up to the top where it would come out and we would inject it here. Uh, we'd actually kind of cut a hole within the channel and um, put the injection wire here at the top. So it would be evenly injected. I don't work with wood often, so trigger warning, the following footage may make purists cringe. I initially wanted to make a base using two legs, but decided that a base with four legs would be more stable and it allow the lamp to be rotated. Starting out by splitting a 10 foot section of oak into eight equal pieces of 15 inches. I made the poor decision to use a jigsaw to cut the wood. The jigsaw worked, but the edges were ragged and they needed cleaning. I trimmed the legs using a Dremel and sanded down the edges. 
It was challenging to figure out the best way to attach the legs to each other and to the corner molding. I finally landed on a spiral interlocking pattern. Once the legs were cut, I used a 240 grit piece of sandpaper to sand down the legs and the molding so that it would accept the stain. My second major mistake of this project was assuming that the stain worked like paint, so I didn't read the instructions. Rather than wiping off the stain after a few minutes, I left the stain to dry over a few days. The result was a gloopy mess. I ended up having to sand off the stain glops. I then reapplied the stain and wiped off the excess after a few minutes. The wood turned out much darker than anticipated, but it worked out in the long run. The next step was to attach the base to the molding. To attach the first two legs, I used a Dremel to cut down the edge of two corner brackets. I then attached the first two legs using the brackets. Once the first two legs were on, I used two wood screws per leg to attach each into their adjacent leg. The result was a sturdy base with the molding running perpendicular to the base. Once the frame was in place, I attempted to run the power injection wire in the corner and then stick and staple the LEDs on the injection wire. This was a disaster as the LEDs were not perfectly straight and the staples were difficult to attach. The result looked like garbage. I then took out the staples and wiring and attached aluminum channeling instead. The hole behind the channel was small, which provided a challenge running the power injection wires through. I had to strip off the wire jacket and fish a string through the holes and then pull the power and neutral wires through. Once the channel was attached to the molding, the finished product looked great. Let's take a quick peek at the controller. Here we have a 5 volt, 5 amp power supply that has a barrel connector. And that barrel connector goes into our little enclosure here. So let me first turn this off and we can unplug this and take a look at what's inside. Here you can see me on the back side. This little enclosure uh, has four screws, so I'll fast forward through this. Take the top off. Here you can see, and I'll get up closer later on, but we have six screw terminals. On the left-hand side, I have two neutral terminals. I have on the right-hand side, I have two positive terminals, and here in the middle, I have two data terminals. Right now, since this is this lamp is only using one data terminal, I have, I'm using this ter terminal on this side, but I have the option of using a second terminal. If I wanted to hook up a second lamp to this side, I could do that, or some other WLED device and control it from there. Let me unscrew this so we can take a closer look. Now we can get a, a closer look. Again, we have the two neutral terminals, the two power terminals, and the two data terminals. Here we have the Espressif ESP32 WROOM. It's not the uh, WT32 Ethernet. We don't need an Ethernet here for our lamp. And here is the main power injection that we have. The power comes from the 5 volt supply, and it is the, the, the 5 volt is delivered to the board as well as to the lamp. If I was to pull this up, I'm using a glove just to make sure that I don't have any static electricity for this particular controller. Underneath we can see that we have two 330 ohm resistors as well as a thousand microfarad capacitor and it's all bent and formed underneath the the board. You can also see that we have a temporary female to male pin headers soldered onto the board so that if we want if the microcontroller ever went bad or we wanted to swap it out with another microcontroller we can do so. Looking on the back you can see that we have the positive line soldered over here to the right hand side and the ne neutral over to the left. The pin 2 and pin 4 have the appropriate data line going to the appropriate screw terminal. That gives an overview of the controller. You can see the SK6812 lights have an additional white channel for that fourth LED we talked about earlier. The lamp is running normal WLED patterns so this would be great for entertainment. We turn the lamp towards people so they can see the different patterns that come out of WLED like you know DJ light or fireworks or blurs or a candle. We can do all these different types of patterns. But what if we wanted to use it for a normal lamp? Right now it's getting a little darker. Let's use it for a normal lamp if we're not entertaining guests. So what we can do is we can go to the effect and create a solid effect. And we have a white color and right now we're all, we're only using the RGB values we're not using the actual white channel here so if I was to add the white channel into it it gets a, even, even brighter right now we're on a low brightness so if I wanted to put that all the way up it's almost blinding so since we probably don't want to have blinding light towards our guests we can angle it towards the wall now we can ramp up the brightness 
and we can even take out the RGB values if we wanted to and just leave a nice warm kind of mellow lighting against the wall. One of the other things I left on here was the hex values and you notice if I was to bring the RGB values kind of halfway here and bring the white channel all the way down. If you're familiar with RGB or hex values, the first two characters is red, the second two characters is green, and the third two characters is blue. And usually we're used to this RGB values. But if I add the fourth channel in here, you'll notice that we start adding a fourth channel, the white. So I can go, if it's all the way down to zero, they don't add that in the hex value. But if I go all the way up to FF, you see that they add this fourth channel here. Overall, I'm happy with the project. We have a functional lamp that we can use for normal use and also turn out the patterns whenever we want to entertain or just have a little bit of fun. A materials list for this project, along with links on where they can be found, is in the description below. If you like this project and have a suggestion on how it could have been done better, or if you have a topic you'd like to see get covered, leave a comment below. If you've not done so yet, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new projects come out. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again on Bites of Pie.